Hey guys, so today I thought I would do a little video on why you should always start your day early. Uh, mostly because I did not start today early and I'm, I did the opposite of everything I'm about to list. So just going to go through why it's kind of nice to start your day early and how you could do that if it's not something you're used to. So jumping right into it, primary thing is obviously productivity. If you start your day early, you could utilize your day more fully. You have more hours in a day to do things. And by productivity, that doesn't even necessarily mean like doing actual work. In my case, if I wake up very, very early, you know, 5 a.m., that kind of thing, I'll usually spend more time on, you know, social media, watching YouTube videos, checking the news, looking up random things that I've been meaning to do. Um... And I'm going to get into some of that, but productivity doesn't always necessarily need to be getting up and going to work early or doing homework, things like that. Another reason for waking up early, just from my personal experience, don't necessarily have the evidence to prove it, but I'm pretty confident about it, is your general health, not only your physical health, but your mental health also. So in my case, physical health wise, the sooner you get up and start moving for the day, the quicker you're burning calories. Even if you're like me, I don't work out. It's one of my things. I Figure that with a good enough diet, won't need to work out. Obviously not the right way to lose weight or anything like that or take care of your body. But that's besides the point. That's not what this video is about. If you're trying to, you know, get your steps in for the day, whatever you want to call it, the sooner you get out of the bed, the sooner you can start doing that. So physically, it's a good thing. Um, also mentally, I know in my case, and I assume this is probably similar for everyone, the sooner you get out of bed and get outside, get into sunlight, start talking to people, all that kind of stuff, the less likely it is that you're just going to get into one of those depression holes where you sit in bed all day with the lights out and watch movies for the entirety of the day and think about the fact that no one's texted you, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm weird or don't have friends or whatever. But I feel like that might be something more common that people would like to admit that if you just sit in bed, you'll kind of I, I'll use the term rot just in the t way of like it's hard to really get motivated to do things if you don't just get up and start it. Um, also, in more technical terms, some other good reasons to wake up early is it's just a good habit for work life. The vast majority of people, if you're working like a full time job, that job will likely start by at the latest 8, 9 a.m. That's at the very latest. And in most people's cases, they need to wake up an hour before that time. So I know for me personally, technically I don't need to be in work till 8. So I would need to be up by around 6, 6.30 to accomplish that. Because if I'm not out of the house by 7, I won't get to work till after 8. Um, so I believe most people kind of have a similar schedule to that. So if you're in the summer or on a weekend or something like that, I still try and wake up early because it keeps my body in the same rhythm of waking up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. or whatever time it is. Um, also, kind of in terms of that thing and something I just kind of mentioned, traffic-wise, regardless of whether you're walking across town, walking across the college campus, or driving to work, there will be less traffic if you get out earlier. Um, this is something I've always done. Obviously, with traffic, I believe that's pretty obvious for everyone. If you're on the road, regardless of where you're listening to this from, if you're on the road before 7 a.m., chances are you're going to have way less traffic than someone that's first hitting the road at 7.30 a.m., a dramatically less amount of traffic. Not only are you getting to work earlier, but you're saving yourself probably, I don't know, for, in my case, it's at least 45 minutes of driving. If I leave the house 15 min minutes before 7 o'clock rather than 15 minutes after 7 o'clock. Um... And then also not even in terms of driving, but just walking around and stuff. If I'm trying to, one of the big things is when I want to go to ShopRite when I'm on my college campus, if I want to go to my local ShopRite in Newark, New Jersey, the best time to do it is around 7, 8 a.m. on a Saturday because no one in Newark is up at 7 or 8 a.m. on a Saturday. And that includes people that might try and harm you and stuff. Not saying that that's a super common thing in my area in Newark. I happen to be in an area I consider very safe. I'm near the college campuses and all that. I could talk about that more in our video, but if I get to shop right at say 10, 11 a.m. instead, it is packed with people. The lines are out the doors. People are going nuts because it's a Saturday. They're going to shop right before they get their lunch and they're out and about for the day. So getting there early definitely helps with things like that. So in general, those are some of my main reasons. Um, also, wrapping back around to productivity, 
you also have less distractions. So not only do you have more hours in the day to get your stuff done, but if you utilize that time early in the morning, you can get things done that you normally wouldn't be able to. For example, the reason I think I'll be able to complete this little video challenge I've been doing is that I wake up early enough that I could record these videos before anyone else is awake and doing things. Even in terms of college and stuff, most of my classes start in the afternoon. My earliest class ever is gonna be 10 a.m. So since I'm usually up by around 6 a.m. at the latest, recording one of these videos before around eight, nine o'clock is really not a big deal for me. So how do I wake up early? Which is, I, a lot of this does have to do with me personally. You would probably have to find your own way if you want to do it for sure. But it's some, these are some ideas you could test out, I guess. Some things that I'm pretty confident if you actually do these things, they would work and eventually your body would get used to waking up early. So one of the ways I start without even doing anything that morning is the night before, make sure that your blinds are open, like that sunlight can get in through your windows and stuff. That'll allow your body to wake up at the natural time of the sun rises. It's a much nicer way to wake up than setting alarms. I do sometimes set alarms, but for the most part, I rely on my body to naturally wake up in time for whatever I'm doing that day. The only time I really set an alarm is if I know I need to be leaving the house or whatever by before 8 a.m., 7 a.m., that kind of thing. But even then, I'm usually awake by 6 a.m. at the latest because the sun starts to rise around then. And at sunrise, the sunlight coming through your windows and stuff will start to wake up your body naturally. It's a just a much more comfortable way. I feel much more well-rested when I'm waking up naturally from sunlight than when an alarm jerks me awake. Um, and kind of in the same vein as that, but different, uh, a good way to really wake up your body is whenever you do wake up, regardless of what time it is, turn the lights on in your room. So in my case, even if I wake up at 4 a.m. for some reason, I'll turn the lights on in my room and that will either prevent me from falling back asleep or if I do fall back asleep, I'm more likely to wake up sooner. Um, it's just one of those things where if you really need to sleep, you will fall back asleep with the lights on. But if you don't need to sleep, the lights being on will help keep you awake. And on a similar note to that, another way I usually stay awake in the morning is I start using my devices immediately, my iPad, my phone, whatever. And oftentimes this isn't in a productive manner. A lot of times, especially at school, if I don't need to be out of the house early, I'll turn on, I'll open up Reddit, start going through news and stuff. I'll flip through my social media. I'll talk about, I will talk about it in an episode very soon, but social media wise, I really only check my med my social media for, I try to limit it to 15 minutes a day. So usually 10 minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, or at the most, usually half an hour a day, most social media platforms, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. So night and morning is when I use those, especially morning, I use it as part of my wake up routine. If you start using your devices, just like there's all kinds of reports saying, oh, using your device late at night keeps you awake, you don't sleep as well, blah, blah, blah. It has the opposite effect in the morning, it helps you wake up and stuff, at least in my opinion, there's probably not studies to prove that, but in any case, that's my experience. Uh, some more obvious things, but still I believe helpful is the sooner you start doing things and physically getting out of bed, it is much, much easier to actually stay awake. So even if you wake up at, you know, 6 a.m. and you're groggy and all that, if you just hop out of bed or even sit up in bed, you are much more likely to actually get up and do things and not fall back asleep. In my case, whenever I wake up, regardless of the time it is, I get out of the bed and physically walk to a different room, usually the bathroom, obviously. But in any case, I get up and walk. It kind of wakes my body up. In addition to that, usually along that walk, I drink some water. Even if I'm not thirsty or I don't think I'm thirsty, I drink a couple ounces of water and that perks your body up, especially if it's cold water, which my water always is. I always have ice in my water. I keep water in the fridge, all that stuff. So drinking cold water definitely helps wake you up. And then if you really want to jerk yourself awake with a normal morning routine thing, some things you do is your basic morning routine stuff. Fix up your hair, brush your teeth, put on deodorant, you shave, whatever. If you do that stuff very early in the morning, there is almost zero chance that you could possibly go back into bed after you did your hair, or in a girl's case, did your makeup and stuff. Um, similarly, as soon as you put on real clothes, it's very hard to hop back into bed and go to sleep. That's one of, that's usually a defining thing for me is of, okay, I'm absolutely not going back in bed. 
is as soon as I put on some jeans and a shirt, there's 0% chance that I'm going to go back into bed. Um, which a lot of this I know is obvious for most people, but I think a lot of people will waste time by just kind of laying in bed, be like, oh, well, I'll get up and get dressed in an hour, things like that. But the sooner you do those things, the more likely it is that you won't fall back asleep and you can be productive with the rest of your day. Um, and then in general, once you leave your room, the rule of thumb I use is once I leave my bedroom, I do not go back in my bedroom until I am ready to go to bed that night kind of thing. So in terms of my dorm and stuff, at college, as soon as I leave my dorm room, I do not come back to my dorm room until usually at least 9 p.m. after I know I am fully done with doing anything productive that day. And then I'll spend the rest of that night goofing off, doing whatever, watching Netflix, watching YouTube videos, whatever it is. Again, productivity has different meanings. It's not always doing actual work. Um, and with that, I think those are pretty much all the things I was going to mention. Um, you can extend some of the things I was saying. You can put on shoes, blah, blah, blah. Big thing I do is I make my bed and not anything fancy. It's literally just I have one blanket, one pillow because I'm a guy and we don't believe in the whole multi-pillow system that girls do. Um, so I just snap that pillow, snap the blanket so it's nice and straight. And that's really it. But once you make your bed, again, it's one of those things. If you're doing all these little tasks and stuff, it really minimizes the chances that you're going to roll back into bed and watch a Netflix show on your tablet or phone or whatever. It just really helps you get moving for the day and it's something I've been doing since I don't know elementary school fourth grade that I wake up very early I get things accomplished even if they're not productive things or what you would usually call productive even if I'm a kind of person I like to stay up to date on Netflix shows and news and all that kind of stuff so I will sit in bed for three hours in the morning going through news and stuff some days but on those days where I'm staying in bed and doing that I feel much groggier and less healthy in general for that day than if I would have gotten out of bed and looked at, through my news while eating breakfast or something like that, just at the kitchen table or even listening to my podcast, watching movies on my tablet, but in a different area where I know as soon as that movie's done, I'm going to be able to snap right into work and do something. So yeah, this video went a lot longer than I was kind of expecting to. I definitely rambled and repeated myself. I need to do a better job of that in the future, but in any case, I think I did a decent job of kind of saying what I needed to say, so I'll wrap it up here, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you.